All right, so this is going to be another movie review. This one's called They Live by Night, 1948 U.S. film noir directed by Nicholas Ray. <laughs> In his directorial debut starring Kathy O'Donnell and Farley Granger, who's great in rope. I hated this. Giving it one out of five stars. Uh, I gave it a little. The last one, they died in the boots. One out of five stars. Every single review, all four of them get one out of five stars today. Based on Edward Anderson's Depression-era novel, Thieves Like Us, the film follows a young convict on the run, who falls in love with a woman, and, and he attempts to begin a life with her. The movie poster says, we're in a jam. The film opened theatrically in London in August 1948 under the title The Twisted Road before it was released in the U.S. by RKO Radio Pictures as they lived by night in November 1949. Though it received favorable reviews from film critics, it was a box office failure, losing the studio $445,000. <clears> and I don't have the box office figures in front of me all i know is that they lost four hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. although the film is considered by many to be the prototype for the couple on the run genre wait i thought fritz lang 1937 you only live once was the prototype they lie they lie it's general, generally seen as the forerunner to the movie Body and Clyde. Again, You Only Live Once, 1937. Fritz Lang. The first telling of the story was actually the 1939 Persons in Hiding, based on the J. Edgar Hoover memoir of the same title. <clears throat> so you've got Two precursors. This this Wikipedia page contradicts itself. You've got two precursors. You only live once and persons in hiding. All right. Robert Altman directed another adoption of the novel using the original title of the novel, These Like Us, 1974, which I have not seen, which is probably better than this. <clears throat> Arthur Bow Bowie Bowers. A 23-year-old serving a prison sentence for a murder he allegedly helped perpetrate at age 16 escapes from prison with his two older banker robbers, Chickamau and T-Dub. Chickamau and T-Dub. The three take shelter with Chickamau's brother, who operates a service station and niece, Catherine Kichi Mobley. That's the name of my great-grandmother's dog, Kichi. The niece who uh, works there is named Catherine Kichi Mobley. What a name. Hope <laughs> These names are crazy. Bowie. Kichi. Okay. Hoping to also free his incarcerated brother, Richard Chikma. <clears throat> concocts a plan to rob a bank and use the funds to hire a lawyer to prove a wrongful conviction. That sounds pretty uh, harebrained. Uh, the robbery goes smoothly. However, shortly after Bowie crashes his car and Chickama then kills a police officer who arrives at the scene. All right, so they, they got all this cash. So what do they do? They buy themselves uh, a zoot suit. And each one of them buys a car, and they're speeding. And Bowie gets in a car crash. This Bowie guy is annoying. He keeps saying there ought to be a law about everything. And uh, it's annoying. He says it at least three times. Okay, so Chickama leaves an injured Bowie in the car. In the care of Kichi, and he turn, joins T Dub in another town. The sheepish, ki, the sheepish. Excuse me, I gotta flip over my pork chops. I'll be right back.
Sorry about that. Had to uh, flip over my pork chops. <clears throat> the sheep is Kichi. Swiftly grows fond of Bowie, who is also shy. The two bond over their lack of experience in the world, and they soon develop a romance. Meanwhile, the press reports heavily on Bowie, wrongly pinning him as the ringleader of the robbery. Bowie and Kichi decide to go on the run together, and they travel by bus through several towns. Greyhound bus. One of those old buses without air brakes, I guess. <clears throat> Late one night, they come across a chapel that performs quickie marriages for 20 bucks. Bowie asks, asks Kichi to marry him, to which she agrees. Hawkins, the local justice of the peace, performs the ceremony, and he sells the couple a convertible car. He also uh, encourages them to go to Me Mexico. <clears throat> Take a trip, trip across the border. The couple travel to a remote mountain resort where Kichi once stayed during her childhood. And they rent a cabin there, dreaming about being able to live openly together. Fat chance. At Christmas time, Chickama arrives at the resort. He starts smashing uh, Christmas bulbs on the Christmas tree. Having tracked the couple there, he has gambled away his money, and he wants Bowie to help him and T-Dub commit another robbery. T-Dub's broke, too. I didn't understand Chickamaw's explanation as to why he got, he became broke, but uh, okay. Bowie reluctantly agrees, though Kichi, fearing Bowie will not make it out alive, gives him his Christmas gift early, a wristwatch. I missed that. The three men commit another robbery. But T Dub is killed during it. <clears throat> Bowie and Chickama flee the scene by the car. I'm missing all these scenes. I don't know what happened. I watched the Criterion Collection disc. <clears throat> and there was some lack of continuity there. While driving, Bowie learns from a drunken Chickama that he is jealous of all the press attention Bowie and Kichi have received. Bowie eventually forces Chickamaw out of a, the car at gunpoint. So Chickamaw is drunk. He's sitting in the back seat. He's like trying to pistol whip Bowie. <laughs> Bowie just pulls a gun out of him and tells him to get out of the car. <clears throat> and uh, as Bowie is returning to the resort, uh, Chickama was killed in a liquor store robbery <laughs> right after he uh, dropped him off. He learned that from Kichi. In radio broadcast, Bowie is again described as the ringleader of the robbery. In a heated conversation, Kichi reveals she is pregnant. The couple depart the resort and, and they head east, traveling mainly at nights so as not to be seen, relenting on their secrets. On their secrecy, they decide to spend a leisurely time in public visiting a park and then the nightclub. In the club, Bowie is recognized by a gangster, causing the couple to flee again. Bowie suggests they escape to Mexico, to which Kichi agrees. Well, then why did they go to Maddie? In route, Kichi grows ill, and the couple seek refuge refuge at a motel owned by Maddie, T-Dub's sister-in-law. Maddie reluctantly allows them to stay. Bowie visits Hawkins, hoping he can help him and Kichi cross the border while Maddie makes a deal with the police that she will turn over Bowie in exchange for Richard's release. When Hawkins tells Bowie he is unable to help him, a bereft Bowie returns to the motel and he informs Maddie he is going to Leave by himself to ensure the safety of Kichi and their unborn child. Maddie enc encourages Bowie to say a final goodbye to Kichi. He agrees and he writes a farewell letter to bring to her. As he's about to enter the captain, the cabin, police unexpectedly descend on the scene, provoking Bowie to draw a gun. 
So that's pretty much the story right there um, from Wikipedia. And I tried to fill in the blanks. The novel Thieves Like Us by Edward Anderson has been bought, had been bought by RKO in 1941 for $10,000. And it just sat there. Um, they had some uh, personnel changes at RKO, and they finally uh, decided to do the Depression era movie. That's why it's kind of strange to do a Depression era movie in 1948, but uh, they, the, our RKO sat on it for like seven years. Okay. Farley Granger recount, recounted that he was at the Saul and Ethel Chaplin's house for a party. Ray had been invited and just sat and drank and stared at Granger. Granger asked Ethel Chaplin about Ray's behavior. She replied that Ray was in the middle of casting his first movie and he had taken a professional interest in Granger. Houseman arranged to have Granger test for RKO, which went very well. Ray was determined that he found Bowie and then asked Granger if there was an actress whom he felt comfortable with. Granger re replied with Kathy O'Donnell, who was brought in to make a test. Both Granger and O'Donnell were under contract to Samuel Goldwyn, a limited acting experience behind them. Granger had been in two films before being drafted for World War II while O'Donnell just made the classic, the best years of our lives, 1946. But Ray was fiercely loyal and fought for both of them. <clears throat> um, RKO contract player Robert Mitchum expressed interest in playing Chickamaw saying that, like Ray, he knew all of the Depression era South and had once been in a chain gang, Robert Mitchum. Mitchum went so far as to shave his head and dye it black for the role. In the original novel, Chickamaw is an Indian. But because Mitchum was a rising star and had recently received an Oscar nomination, the role of the bank robber was deemed unfit for him. <clears throat> John Houseman was involved with this somehow. He's he was the producer, <clears throat> and he he is in this the bonus features a lot. There are a lot of bonus features interviews with movie experts and producers, and lots of boring stuff on the Criterion disc. So there it is. I guess I'll watch Clute now while I'm cooking up my pork chops. I'm almost done. And uh, I did four reviews today. Try to make up for uh, lost time. Working two jobs. <laughs> I think I caught up on my sleep. My eyes aren't bloodshot. <laughs> like they are when I'm working graveyard. <laughs> I think I'm going to catch up on sleep during the next two nights and then I'll get no sleep Tuesday, night. <laughs> Tuesday night. <laughs> it's going to be bad. It's like a sleep roller coaster. Too much sleep, then not enough sleep. <laughs> and then trying to catch up again on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, man. My sleep schedule is all messed up, but uh, I was able to pay all my bills. I did it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with my living situation in a couple months, but uh, I was saying that a few years ago, and I ended up uh, in a better place, actually. <laughs> so... Uh, Anything could happen. My coworker said, oh, don't worry. You'll find a place. I've got two months left. I'm working two jobs. I have no time to look. Laters.